Hello. This will be our first lecture for lab and I want to get you familiar with the digital trainers. We'll be using this digital trainer here both in this course and the next course and uh, the more you know about its layout the better you'll be for your lab exercises. So I want you to take a look at this whiteboard here. We're going to start by looking at the whiteboard. And I want you to notice the whiteboard has has a red positive rail that runs horizontally and it has three of them and it has three horizontal blue rails. The continuity in these red and blue rails is horizontal. In other words, this point's connected to the next point, which is connected to this point and this point and the end point. These are all common. And the same is true for the blue and the red and the blue and the red and the blue. That's where we'll put our voltages and our grounds from from our pickoff points over here in a minute. The continuity in the center of these whiteboards is vertical. In other words, these points are all connected together and these points are all connected together, but these points and these points across this open space are not connected. Let me say that again. Pick a point over here. All these points here are common and all these points here are common, but these points are not connected to these. The only as you're facing the board, the only points that are common to one another are on these rails. So that's the whiteboard layout. The second thing I want you to notice is these switches. You have eight switches, switch one through switch eight. And you have logic switches. These logic switches we're going to use when we need to generate a manual clock because these are debounced. And we'll explain more about that in chapter 5. But we'll be using some of these logic switches, either switch A or switch X or switch Y, and we'll be using some of these data switches. In the first couple labs, we'll probably just simply use the, the data switches. We have LEDs. We have eight LEDs at the top, LED A through LED H. This is how we're going to determine whether our outputs are functioning properly. A low output, the LED should stay off, and a high output, the LED should come on. The first thing I'm going to have you do before you start building your circuits on these trainers is I want you to connect up one of these rails to VCC and one of these rails to ground. So to start out, we're going to take your plus 5 volts here. Notice the plus 5 volts is labeled here, and the ground is labeled here. Here's a minus 12, and here's a plus 12, and here's some... Uh, AC voltages over here, but we're not going to be using these AC voltages, the minus 12 volts DC or the plus 12 volts DC until we get to the next course. In this course, we're just going to use ground and we're going to use VCC. So I'm going to take any point here on VCC using a red wire and I'm going to connect it. And I don't care which one of these red buses you use, but to be conventional for our lab, I'm going to have you take the one here either on the bottom rail or the top rail. It doesn't make any difference. We're going to stay away from this one down here. You'll see why in a minute. So when I take this plus 5 volts to the very first point here, and that's what I want you to do before you start every lab, it makes every one of these points plus 5 volts when I turn this on. And I'm using a red wire because it's VCC. Then I'm going to take a black wire and I'm going to go from ground, any one of these points here on ground, to this blue wire down here, to this blue bus or rail down here. Notice that I could have used this blue up here as the ground rail the whole way across, but the problem with that is it's too close to the to the VCC, and you, you get you 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 might be apt to. to plug in a wire in the wrong place when you're trying to bias up these integrated circuits through here. So we're going to keep this as the plus 5 volt rail using a red wire and we're going to make a ground to the first point down here and this will be our ground point the whole way across here for each IC, IC we put in the circuit. And then we're going to take our integrated circuit. Notice we have our layout here of our integrated circuits on our foam, on our conducting foam. And we want to get a 7404 because I'm going to have you build this circuit. 
to start out with. You're going to take a hex inverter. We talked about it in the lab. You're going to take one of the six inverters in that package, the 7404 package. And we're going to pin one as an input and pin two as an output. And we're going to connect it like this. But before we do that, we have to identify where it's at here on this foam. And if you notice, it's going to be the fourth one down. You can read it or very carefully. It's 7404. Now you do not want to plug it into the circuit like that because keep in mind that will short out pins on either side of the chip because these are all common points here. When you plug this in you have to place this in with pin 1 to the left hand side and the way you can tell pin 1 here if you take a look a little hard to see but there's a little dimple on this integrated circuit. That little dimple makes this pin 1 this pin 7, this pin 8, and this pin 14. You can see that from your specifications. So I'm going to plug this into the circuit. I'm not going to put it at the end. I'll put it right here into the circuit very carefully. And now we have to bias up this integrated circuit before we start using it. So we have to take a red wire and we have to look at the spec. Pin 14 is VCC. So we want to go from pin 14 any one of these pins here to the VCC rail. Keep in mind that VCC rail runs the whole way across here. So you see you see why we have it on that side of the chip? Because VCC is most of the time is going to be on the upper part of that chip, on the back side if you will of the chip. Well be careful some of these integrated circuits in the specs are 16 pin packages. So you're going to go from pin 1 to pin 8 in pin 9 to pin 16 and pin 16 will be VCC. Now we have to ground that chip we use a black wire and I looked at the spec on the 7404 and I know pin 7 is ground so I go from pin 7 to a point down on the bottom ground rail. Take a close look at that. I want you to build your circuits like this. First thing you do when you come in I want you to set up these VCC and these ground rails and then bias up your chips and then you we're gonna bend this all aside get this out of the way because when I look at your integrated circuits and you're gonna have many more placed along here as well and bias them up I can see that when I turn this on this circuit this integrated circuit is gonna be biased with VCC on pin 14 ground on pin 8 I use red wire for all my VCC connections and I use black wire for all my ground connections. Very easy for me to see if you have an issue. Now we're going to use white wire and we're going to use white wire to build this circuit right here. I want you to notice we have a switch as an input and we have LEDs as outputs so we can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from switch 1 to pin 1. Forget about this LED up here. LED A and LED B for now. I'm going to go from switch 1 to pin one and I'm going to use a white wire because white is going to be data so here's switch one I have four different points to choose from here and I'm going to go to pin one and I have four different points to choose down here as well white is going to be data I just put this wire in the circuit I went from pin one from switch one to pin one there's my wire I'm going to go from the output pin 2 of this hex inverter to LED B. Pin 2 to LED B. I'm going to use a white wire because it's data. So I come out of pin 2 very carefully and I go to LED B. You have to look at that very closely. LED B is the second one in. Here it is. LED B. So, I've just put this wire in the circuit from pin 2 to LED B. Now, just so I can see what's going on a little better, I'm going to take pin 1. I, I could go from, I'm going to take pin 1 to LED A. Now, I could have jumped from switch 1 to LED A. Same point. This is all the same point. But I'm just going to go from pin 1 again to LED A, and I'm going to use a white wire. I'm going to go from pin 1. very carefully to LED A up here the first one 
what I've just done is built this circuit. I went from switch one to pin one with the white wire, from pin one to LED A with the white wire, and from pin two to, to LED B with the white wire. All my red wire is VCC, all my ground wire is ground, and all my white wire is data. Now I'm going to plug in the, the kit and I'm going to turn it on, making sure to start out that switch one is low. Switch one is down, it's low here. That's going to put a zero at this point right here, a ground. So I'm going to turn it on. Notice if I have a ground on switch one, which I do, that there'll be zero volts here, LED A should be off, and it is. I take that zero on the paper through the inverter, puts me a one out here on pin two, that B should be on, and it is. Now, let me take switch one high, make this a one and see if LED A goes on and LED B goes off. It does. Input is low, LED A is off, and B is on. Switch 1 is high, LED A is on, and LED B is off. That's that simple circuit right there. What I'm going to have you do in lab is I'm going to have you build additional circuitry onto this. In other words, I'm going to have you eventually do something very similar to this. Let me draw it and then I'll show it to you. You're going to use two more inverters. You're going to go from pin 1 to pin 2. You're going to go from pin 2 to LED B. And you're also going to go from pin 2 to the next input of your hex inverter. And you could use any of the remaining five, but what I'm going to have you use is the next one. You have to look at the specs to see what the next pin is going to be. It's going to be three, and the output's going to be four. And rather me have you use all three of them on the same side here of this integrated circuit, I'm going to have you go ahead and put your pinouts of three and four. You have to look at the specs so you see where I'm getting this. Instead of having you use pins five and six, the third one, I'm going to have you use a hex inverter from the other side, from this back side, if you will, because you'll see the pinouts from your spec. And you're going to, you're just going to build this circuit first and see if the correct LED, if LED goes off, LED B goes on, LED C goes off. Or if LED A is on, LED B should be off, LED C should be on. And then you're going to add on this, this, this next one. We'll be doing that all in lab. But all I wanted to do, just to get you familiar with the trainer in general, and in real quick review, I want you to notice the first thing I want you to do is get a ground rail or a ground established in the very bottom blue line here to make every point across here ground. And I want you to use a red wire to go from VCC, that's plus 5 volts, to the very first point here. And then that'll make this whole red rail here a common plus 5 volts. Then you're going to place your integrated circuits. We're only using one integrated circuit, but in future labs, we're going to have two, three, four, or more integrated circuits. And the way you bias them up is you take VCC of the chip to the rail, and you take ground of the chip to ground. And you'll do that for as many integrated circuits as, circuits as you put in here. Keep it in mind, you can pick any one of these points up here for VCC. You don't have to jump the whole way from here over to here. You don't have to jump from ground the whole way back, pin 7s, the whole way back over to here. Because we made this all ground down here. Once you get these chips biased, you get that out of the way, bend it down a little bit, your, your red and black wire. And you simply, I just look at the white wires to see if your dad is is work is working correctly 
we'll be using this clock and this frequency and these other potentiometers up here later on in the course but for now that's the basics of this digital trainer and that concludes the lecture